Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Bobby Sapphire, and I am here with Justin and Maddie to talk about the first week of planetary qualifiers. We're going to do some meta analysis. Boys, how do we address, adjust to the boba green meta? Well, me and Maddie are going to address uh, the, the other menace, which is the FOMO menace, because we didn't get to play this weekend and you did it. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to be real. more on that side. But yeah, really excited to, to jump into the, the PQ data. Yeah, I'm going to have that next weekend when I don't go to Rochester and a bunch of people do, and I'm going to wish I was there. Following the Discord for all the updates and if there's streams or whatever. Yeah, man, living that life. Yeah, it was the- wild. I was I was watching your game live at a wedding, <laughs> like when the meal came and you were down. I knew my battery was going to run out at some point. And it was like your turn four, and I was like, does he have the Poe? And it just went like, and I was like, mm-hmm. Spoilers. I did not have the Poe. Uh, but it did it that it did feel like an old school weekend in that way. Like yeah. with one of us at a card tournament, the other one of us at a wedding or whatever. Like that was really funny. Maddie was buying a car, like at the car dealership oh, yeah. when I was playing. Shoot. So it was like was, you guys Steve doing was on super... a chase for for a cat that is that is lived in his house. Steve's he's not still, here because he's, he's hunting not here a night. cat. Yeah. He's hunting a cat. There's a cat There's... living in the house he bought. It's like but it's behind the fireplace. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it felt it felt like the good old days, and we we're gonna have some more shout outs to the good old days as we dig into oh, these yeah. planetary qualifiers. But first, we got to give a shout out to our teammate TD Tata, Professor Numpty. My daughter Juliet was singing Professor Numpty, Professor Numpty <laughs> whatever the line is. The yeah, master of the game. She was singing it. Uh, oh, no. Shout out, shout out to Professor Numpty taking down the SCG 2K in Maryland. Huge gaming weekend in Maryland this weekend at the SCG, the giant Magic Regional qualifier. Um, you know couple thousand people i think narrowed down to top yeah. eight finally but tata finally wins one he used chronos exact uh, yep. uh 60 for the sabine and then he shout out chrono and <laughs> justin there i Justin's, got a little shout Justin's out at the end. no it was sick really though he took arts. like he took chronos list he shouted him out he crushed um it was it was dope because he made top eight and was like oh, i don't want to split i want to actually get the win and then he made top four he's like should we should I play it? And we were all like, play it, play it, like take it down. And he took it down. Um, I think the next thing we saw was the picture of, of him pointing yeah. there and rocking the KTOD gear, yep. off brand gear. He had sick. to win because um, he's about to get the KTOD backpack, baby. Yeah. Oh, baby. Got to ship the backpack in a backpack. Upgrade. Oh, I meant to grab that. Is... I actually, yeah, I meant to grab my backpack because I had some sweet stuff in it from the con. Yeah, dude. Maddie, do you know it has, a, it has a whistle on it? Can you blow the yeah, whistle online? Yeah, I've been looking online? for that. It's at the top. Like, like on the front side, like as if you were wearing it and you had to whistle. Like, where would oh, it be? Oh, that's sick. I'm not going to whistle, so don't blow in anyone's eardrums, but I'm definitely going to uh, round up the numpties when we're going to uh, a community meetup. So yeah. he took out the, um, he took out Boba Green in the finals and he took out Boba Yellow in the semifinals. Pretty great. Um, yeah, a little precursor know, to some things we'll talk about um, later yeah, this on was, today about how he did that. Because that was Sabine into Boba, two wins. The Boba Green I, it was, was ECL. But we'll talk a little bit about the 30 matchup because yeah. that was a big Yeah, but like shout, shout out to him too for like grinding that top eight, even though those are like quote unquote unfavorable matchups, even though like, you know, know the lines that changes things. Obviously, anyone, um, you know, this, in our Discord knows that. But it was just cool to see him go for it and take it down. This is he really played against player. Boba Green 30, not ECL. Oh, okay. Um, well, there you go. Yeah. Oh, right. I see it now. Yep, yeah, and this it. is, you know, there were three three out of the six PQ finals so far are um, Boba Green versus Sabine. And then I just want to say that, um, w- like, I don't know, some of, probably me, but maybe a couple of us will, will record later tonight. There's still one PQ going on, but we will cover that in some form uh, in towards the end of this video. Uh, so let's dig into the first PQ, which happened. Uh, oh, so sorry. I wanted to shout out the Star Wars Unlimited Competitive Hub because they are Ooh. a website that is accumulating all this data. And they've been working with me and the guys from the Garbage Rollers and Woo to sort of like put a, put together a spreadsheet with as many deck list uh, links, um, you know, links to decks and, and videos too, and melee pages. Like this is a great resource. And he's working with um, a bunch of different content creators, like the ones I named. So we can all just have the, the information out and get it to as many people as we can over the, um, over the season. So yes. you could check them out. Um, but the first one that happened was Spain, the Ooh. battle for Zaragoza, the Lista's top 16. Um, and that list, uh, actually, the, the slide I deleted for this is not as descriptive, but the first place uh, was Boba Yellow, and it beat P- 
help yellow in the finals. And then okay. the, well, the other top four decks were Vader green and uh, another Boba yellow. And those will all be in um, like all those links will be in the show notes for the video, but this is the Boba yellow winner. And I think it's interesting to talk about Boba yellow in conjunction with, um, you know, so Spain, like, you know, we think of Europe, we think a lot of Boba Green, but this didn't have Boba Green in the top eight at all. Um, mm -hmm. How is this list going to hold up to the Boba Greens that, you know, that are infecting American PQs? Well, I don't know about how it's going to hold up, but this guy can swap his Dr. E's out for a top eight Royal <laughs> Dr. E. I'll tell you that right yeah, now. That's bling. exciting to see. I will tell you, Dr. E was like one of my like favorite cards when it was in spoiler season. I was like, this card looks so insane. I was like so happy to play him. I like will. I like tried to will it to work with like McClunkies and Jabba to find McClunky to bounce mm -hmm. and even like the the um the, the big ship to bounce. I had like every bounce in the world to like just bounce my own Dr. E. And I just couldn't get it to work and I got like punished too many times yeah. and like even played him in draft and got punished by Mike when we did the hangout. Um, and he like untapped all his resources. But <laughs> I think this deck, I think this deck is interesting. I mean, um, I, one of the things that I would say is like, and you saw like with the yellow being in the finals, like the European meta sometimes is a little bit sort of a little bit more like, hey, let's explore ideas, going a little bit further with like control. You're not necessarily seeing like a field that's like filled with Sabines. And even the Sabines sometimes get a little bit more creative. They're not necessarily like three Dark Saber, three Po, three Wrecker. So with this being with that meta being like a little bit more kind of all over the place sometimes, um, this this deck looks look really linear. And then against the controls, you've got the Phantoms. Mm -hmm. Um yep. so yeah. I think, you know, that seems really good. I could see he's got the third phantom in the board. Um, and he's, it's, it, you know, he's got like a pretty creative look to it. So, and then, and, you know, Dr. E, if they don't have the removal, like he can be like, you know, present a lot of damage. So, um, yeah. And he played against yellow palp in the final. So like, that's, that's a situation where Dr. E seems great. Um, right. And he's got, yeah, right. You don't have the blue removal spells and he's got that. He's got Dr. E. He's also got, you know, the, the bash brothers in a full three of there which seems really good and he's got access to like the extra body and like mm. adventures and stuff like that yeah i think so the, I the key I think there is like good. the boat the body is going to have to be pretty key to strip like either ramp or barrages right i think it's still hard like i think i think de dealing 30 with boba yellow can be kind of tough like i feel like whenever i play like a 30 point base into boba yellow i feel okay um so i wonder how it does adapt to the boba greens but no way um, yeah, no yeah. way. This isn't exactly how I do it, um, but I, I've been giving Boba Yellow a lot of thought, especially since, like, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about how we adjust to this meta and stuff, but, like, the way that the other Bobas are going to have, the green Bobas are going to have to adjust to each other, I think they're going to be slightly worse against the Boba Yellows, um, and that we can kind of, like, the, the lack Sneak of space in the Boba, Boba Greens is, like, really crazy right now. So I, I really love the main deck Phantoms. I've been running a couple main deck Phantoms for a while now. I actually would be on more surprise strikes because I would want to be space more. Yeah. Um, and fewer hotshot blasters. And I would still have waylays, like Justin said. I know right. they're not great. You don't want to be waylaying against Boba Green. Um, but I still like them. And I honestly, I still like a Relentless Pursuit. And I think it's a great time for a new adventure as well as um, Boba, like, people will be playing more control to counter Boba and the ANAs are like really good against things like top target death mark, things like that. Right. I Would do you think have Bazine in your 60. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. No Bazine. I didn't really. Yeah. I it's wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have. And like, you, you know, it's like what's missing. Like I saw the waylays and now the Bazines. I would definitely have the Bazines. I think maybe this is just like on the get them dead plan because you've got like a lot of yeah the viper the, probe droids and the avazin and the, like, definitely the to get them dead viper probe droids and avazin so you're just like pushing into base which isn't bad like if people are playing resupplies and you're just like jamming all these units and then mm -hmm. playing something like cutting it does sound pretty good yeah, yeah I would honestly be considering the um the three three overwhelm bounty hunter instead of mm -hmm. of these guys of like the viper probe droid and stuff. That seems that way better. Two yeah. damage to himself like because like, one, and then they get the ruthless ready to... assassin. Yeah, ruthless assassin because you can damage. Um, you can damage any unit, right? It's not just him. You can throw it to. Yeah, so you could anything. throw it to Toro and then untap the Toro, like you know. You can throw it to Boba Fett with an armor and take no damage. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm actually really high on testing Boba Yellow in the coming two weeks for my next PQ. Yeah, I think the big thing here to me is like, how does this deck that has like more two drops and like. 
really, you know, kind of low to the ground. It's got, like the cunnings and it's got like really kind of pushing damage. How does that work against a Boba Green 30 that's trying to get, you know, it's playing three Vaders, three Mauls, Relentless, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Reinforcement Walker. Like, what does that matchup look like sort of on the average? We played 10 games. Like, what do they usually look like? Is it is one sort of pressing to, to beat the other? Is it pretty even? Is it like one player needs to find lines? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that to me is really fascinating on how that works. Because I think initially, everyone thought Boba ECL would, was the better Boba. And then, like, Boba Yellow, Mike, you kind of one of the first players to really pilot it. And then it just was like a... It was just like a, uh, you know, a, a deluge of Boba Yellows for a couple mm -hmm. months, where it was clearly like the he more heavily played one, and now it's like you've got this third version of Boba, the Boba Thirty, mm -hmm. um, and you don't totally know where it fits in on the pie. But now people have to actually say, wait a second, like we can't just sort of think it's this little thing that maybe pops up. Maybe it's we don't even know how many cards are in the deck. Now it's like, all right, let's actually see like what are our sideboard plans against the thirty point version. Now there's three that we have to worry about, not just two. Yeah, and then. We also talked about it briefly on the podcast uh, last week, but there was that Jetta version of this floating around Texas, and like that's kind of interesting if the if the game goes more. That's certainly time. interesting, although I think you know it's the type of thing like that can kind of stay like a little bit on the side of like that's a zany idea yeah. that might be great, but like right now, it was two versions of Boba with like this zany idea that like you know Alex yeah. kind of championed fifty four like, but now it's like no, there are now officially three versions right, of right. tier one Boba there might be some that we have to think about lines with the Jetta though like if you're trying to go space and they contest in space i just think it's like, interesting yeah. to try yeah to test um sure. and i will there are a lot of people who were playing bobby yellow before me and I, I learned a lot from them and hit them up before i ran it at that at that event it was a right. big team effort back then all right, let's move to America. And I don't know why I did this in this order. I think I just copied whatever order we did. The uh, like the website had it in the competitive hub. But we're gonna first go to Common Ground Games in Dallas, where Boba Green faced ECL. He faced our boy Call, who is a longtime subscriber, one of our first subscribers. And he um, Call is a good friend of mine. Like we've hung out several times at Destiny events over the years. Um, and he was switching to ECL. He he went on vacation to Italy for like two weeks. He subscribed to our tour tournament prep pod i sent him like downloads of all the the oh, podcasts. He's, in the tournament. he's in the tournament prep he, pod. he did it for good. he joined the tournament prep tier because he couldn't play basically other than like carabast on vacation with his wife in italy right. and he's like i need a bunch of stuff to download for the long bus rides when we go from city to city so um i sent him all the links to like download oh, that's them and sick um, yeah, and he, he listened to all the dope. pods. Yeah, the pod's the dope. And he makes the semifinal, or he, he beats uh, Inception in the semifinals and then makes the finals against Boba Green. Uh, yeah, I watched it Inception live. I think, as well. He had a great run as well. Yeah, he had a great yeah, run. Maddie, yeah, did great. You and I were watching this live. We were kind of cheering him on. There was this weird thing where the coverage broke in the middle of game two and they like started advertising like the magic RQ mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes. Um, shout out to the finalist to the winner he played very well i watched him um he played incredibly tight and and just kind of like it, it it wasn't necessarily i would say a close final um all did his best but this was kind of i don't want to say a bloodbath because there were certainly like a few draws that the sabine maybe could have had but it was the boba deck was exerting its dominance Coming. it was like barrage and then it was like ramping and it was playing an armor and it was playing a vader that was getting another card that was very strong and then it was playing like fetch fire spray and there's some you know, certain it was just like in the man. mall like the mall just being like units out okay now those units like you have wrecker wrecker's cute i've got mall yeah um, when, when mall takes no damage and kills something it's it's pretty savage yeah it was just like a stream and one of the things that i've been saying and i'm not i'm sort of not sure when did correctly interjects this is like i've been telling you for a while mike like and i think i've been putting this in our discord of like the as from the sabine side of things not pinging killing their units trusting our late game to be really strong against boba yellow has been really effective it's given us a line into a difficult matchup to now feel like we we understand the pathway of how to win right so i had a bunch of people ask me yesterday like oh do you like because i said i like my game plan into boba yellow and when i can hit that game plan i don't feel right. like i'm unfavored i can't right. always get the game plan going, you can't always like, get there it's yeah. a difficult matchup but it felt so like unfavorable like, right when boba yellow first came out i was like oh my god like shoot he's abandoned to be now it's like okay we have this thing we can kind of yeah when like, i hit those cards right we can hit when record I... we can hit poe we can kill and we can have these games that like look really good and we can send like 
you know, screen caps to each other. Like, mm-hmm. this is the board state of where I got. It's great. It's harder to do that against the green decks that have mm-hmm. three Maul, three Vader, two Reinforcement Walker. Like, Fett's Fire Spray yeah. is, like, the sort of little brother now of that, of that curve. It used to be at the top end. So, um... Yeah, you can't, like, take the time to... Right. You're yeah. not going to, like, trust to, like, oh, I'll draw and I'll play Wrecker and I'll kill your unit. And then, like, they can't, they can't answer the Wrecker. Now they kind of can answer everything. And they're, they, like, the Boba Green 30 that's playing 8 to 9, like, really huge bodies that are, like, higher cost than Fett's Fire Spray, you basically have to get them dead. Right. Um, but they're at 30, and it's hard. Like, it's a hard matchup. So I think that there needs to be more mental process there and what happens. And, and um, But it was an impressive win. Um, and shout out to, I don't know that, we don't think he had the screen name here, but he, I watched a couple of the matches, and he, he was he was playing very tight. Uh, the Boba Green player... On yeah. here, it says Mind's Desire, so it might be that might be the name he goes by elsewhere. Um, but this list uh, looks a lot like you were describing the eight um, drops above Fett's Fire Spray. He's got three Mall, yeah. three Vader, and two Reinforcement Walker. And and uh, fifty cards. Important to note, fifty, 50 cards. So cards. He's, he's, he's I wanna, hitting resupply. He's not losing his his numbers on resupply. Like yeah. he's hitting his. his I want to um, loop back to fifty cards when we talk card. about the RSG ones, um, uh, the event that I was at, but. Um, three Boba Fett's armor. I still think people should be embracing commission and running two, but I get it. You want to hit it. I just think like you can hit it pretty often and you also get to hit that Fett's fire spray, but maybe with these guys not topping out at Fett's fire spray and you're happy to just like have like be getting to the Vader mall reinforcement walker turns that that's fine. Um, the armor's just so good. Like the I mean, armor's it's insane. Just, yeah. It's, it's its own little mini game. Like, this guy had one of the... cloud rider, just like the guys in Jersey did. Yeah, yeah, I, I think Clutter Rider is really good. That was like when I looked at this list last night. I was like, you know, eleven o'clock at night when I first saw it, and I was like, you know, the Cloud Rider is like the probably the card that I would like try to get in the second end of really badly, but like, uh, stuff looks really good. Like, I mean, that's the thing. I look at this and I say, like, you know, I think a lot of people are really weirdly defensive about like matchups. They're like, oh, we crushed that deck, and we're eighty you know, twenty, and it's like that stuff doesn't play. Like, that just shows your sort of newness to card games and and wanting to sort of create false bravado like as a Sabine player I'm like yeah this this could be trouble like let's actually right. get in the lab and let's work on how to figure this out um yeah 80, you know I think crazy, it's, it's but wild. people do say it they do say things are like 80 20 85 a lot 15. of brand new yeah people that shit doesn't, doesn't make sense wild um, what's, cool, what's cool about yeah, this deck it's a, it's a spotlight on like how how sort of insecure you are yeah the, well people um, you know I think in a game like this sometimes people get a little deck identity and it's like but like I've been I've been like super like comp, not confident, but I'm like, hey, we have a real good plan against these boba decks. Like, let's embrace them. Like, Mike, you played Sabine this weekend, and I was like feeding you like the info, and CJ was too. I look at this and I'm like, huh? Like, this, yeah, we, this we, we're gonna have to we have to rethink have to everything. Some, we're gonna that... have to rethink what our approach is here, and not to say like we there isn't something we can slide into, but I mean that that top end we have to get them before. Before yeah, before happens. they start those, throwing that. Those stuff four out. cards on the right side, especially right. the three, like the three green ones. Well, like, like what else? That's a tough. It's tough. It's tough to deal with that. Yeah, what I was about to say too is like we always talk about these like mid rangey decks like that can turn from controlling to killing fast. Like this deck can do it so well between both. Like Boba flipping on five resources. If you ever ramp, yeah. you're so close to that. You have an armor like. So you can start. Yeah. You can start taking over the game at that point with a barrage. So with the best card in the game. For like, yeah. Then you can like barrage for eight, kill everything, get in there, and then finish them with the maul. Like, yeah. And then you dude, have, and it's like, and like you, you barrage spray, Vader yeah. maul. Some of the best cards in the game, and the reinforcement walker that just, it's the ultimate stabilizer when you need to stabilize, and it's yeah, the it's ultimate the value cards. train when you need to value. Like they gave the best leader an insane item. Golly, man. Yeah. I, anyway. I will say yeah, this, this is, is it, this is a deck like I am going to build this list. Like I'm yeah. going to physically build this with cards. Like and that's gonna be in my deck box of like this is something that I would think about playing. Today. Oh boy. Uh yeah, great list. And not the first Boba Green we'll talk about. I love the I love the choose side. Is that was it change sides? Uh that's choose sides can board. really yeah. it's crazy how similar this is to the list that we're gonna look at when we talk about Jersey. Um oh. so what's any of these guys in seen. the um they they weren't in this Discord, right? Uh, I don't think mine's desires, but we've had we've had like ten or eleven new subs just today, and I know like 
like if we go to the jersey it's slide like, towers boy though tower was shouting him out oh yeah line. it's anil anil this is towers Tower. boy. anil so that's can, the guy's name um, so i would imagine cool. check tower's out. been a long-standing yep. uh shout out to tower for being also shout out to oh, tower for casting the jersey one Put tower number three. nine great job on tower number nine i'm sorry um and then like people were like messaging him and i, lo- I love tower's energy i'm just like like the vibe um but like then hopping in the other thread and like just like he just couldn't get enough Star Wars Unlimited yesterday. So shout out to, to Tower and yeah. a boy for winning and playing super tight. Yeah, yeah. and um, I would imagine Tower number nine will make some content about that since that's his friend that made it. Um, I think the only two the only two that got tagged to me were Call and Inception is subscribers. Um, but yeah, just there weren't a lot of subscriber tags in the event results thing, and I was trying to I was doing family time, so I didn't get all of it done. But yeah, as as just to mention, Tower Number Nine and Chrono, our teammate, casted for a lot of the event of the R the RSG stream. The Dallas one was also streamed by the Bucketheads. You can check out the link in uh, the show notes on YouTube, and I'll have the link to these videos. Uh, one of our subscribers, Titan. Uh, streamed this event and then he got people to cast from the community so Tower started with Endless you know Endless if you play Star Wars miniatures and then Chrono picked it up and I don't know who ended up doing later I was at the event so um, I finished the event in 6th place I'm that Sabine ECL that's highlighted there uh, yeah. this deck this was eventually won I was knocked out by the Boba Green who eventually won and our teammate Wu finished 7th in Swiss and lost in the semifinals uh, also to the guy that won so he kind of just mowed through us and the other thing I meant to shout out on the previous one is that we're seeing another Han Wen yellow sneaky um, like in all these top eight. so it's a deck that's like you know definitely rising to prominence it's doing well yeah made the finals um, made the finals here um, yeah it's uh, it's just a good, it's just a good deck that. Uh, yeah, I think that deck's good. Yeah, that value I, playing turn one three, you know three cost things and and uh, does a and, lot of really cool things like early on, and it does a lot of really cool things late game with tech. Certainly yeah. a deck so, like, that I've each, I've been. I was lower on earlier in the set, but after talking to Alex Blandin a lot and like seeing him play it uh, and playing against it. My opinion of it has has certainly changed. I th- I don't know if it can beat the Boba Greens. I'm interested to see how those guys adjust. Right. Um, yeah, one thing works. that the guy did at this event with his Boba Yellow was they played uh, Liberated Slaves so that all their three drops were three Han fives. Yellow. Yep, the three Han fives. Yellow, sorry, all they were all three fives, so they would all survive the Zuckus hit. Um, so that's why oh, they that's were off cool. Rogue Operative and off. Forlum? Oh, that's uh, really four smart. I, um, sorry, four yeah. I played. Yeah. My brain's working after today. Gen that's Con okay. when like people were talking about this deck. I played it. Um, just testing a couple, you know, the various ways that you can test. Um, and I think I won like 20 games in a row and I was like, this deck is great. And then I like played it, you know, sort of into like some of the internally with our tournament testing yeah. team when you actually try to like figure it out and be like how to beat it. Yeah. And we recognize like a few different pathways. But I do think the deck is really, it's, first of all, it's super fun to play because you get to like do these really neat things. You get to play the Han unit, which is fun to play. You get to play tech and like go off with like random stuff. It's it's like a combo um, deck. It it kind of feels a little bit like hex mage depths, where like you have a lot of different ways to combo yeah. and win. Um, you could do you could do it a bunch of different ways. Hex mage depths is probably the number one magic connection to this game that I've talked about because like the two the two sided like internal deck thing in this game is really big. Mm-hmm. Or like I'm gonna go this route because you can draw two cards, you resource everything, so you can like lean into to multiple space, so you can lean into ground. Deck. Yeah, you get to play the game you want sometimes. Right. Um, one thing I'll say about this event from being boots on the ground was that when we sat when we sat down for round one, it was all Sabine Green. It was all Sabine Green and Boba Yellow, um, and I definitely <laughs> felt like man, I should have just played Ray Blue. Um, I would have felt a lot better into this field. Yeah. But if I had had the matchups you that I did, though. I, no, but I top aided, and if I played the match, like if I played the exact same seven rounds, which like I wouldn't have obviously. Right, right, um, right, right. Schrodinger's uh, deck box, or however you want to describe it, but. Um, I I wouldn't have been happy because I didn't play Sabines all day. I had two mirrors. I played right, one Boba Yellow. Um, I played against some some slower control decks. I kind of got lucky there as the Sabine player to do that. But the right. one thing I do want to mention is, and this like people who listen to our tournament prep podcast will know, is that I've been training on Sabine with Justin and Chrono for weeks, and um, I didn't feel like last weekend at my one K, I didn't feel like I was prepared to skill gap my opponents with Sabine. I needed like another week or two or whatever. Um, and I finally hit that point 
this week where I was like, I think I'm ready. You know, Justin, you and I got a lot of games this week. Yep, Maddie, we Maddie, Maddie, you and I got games. Yeah. Um, and I felt a lot better about the way I was playing the deck. Um, and I felt like if I sat down against people, I would figure out ways to win. Um, and, you know, I did for most of the day. I didn't for the entire day. You can watch me lose on stream in the top cut um, with the link below. But um, one thing that was interesting is so I played against the winner and, uh, you know, we're chatting beforehand and he and the other guy who are who the first place and third place in, place in Swiss, they're both mathematics PhD students. No um, yeah, That's I cool. think in New York, I don't remember what college or I don't remember if he said. <laughs> But uh, so when I went to look like, at his oh, list, they're current, they're I know current, this is going. They're current, current PhD students. And I was like, oh, I got to count this list to see if it's 54. And I was like, oh, wait, he's a math PhD student. I don't have to count this <laughs> list. <laughs> and I did not. And I'm nope. sure that it's 50. Um, <laughs> but that, that was That's funny awesome. for me. Yeah. Uh, and this is Austin's list crusher. He was a really tight player. Um, you know, when we played, he was in game mode. But when we weren't playing, he was like very chill and talkative which was great. Like yeah, I, I'm happy great. with the code switching. Uh, the list was really interesting. So no, no surprise strikes, no no, and, but he walker. does have Whaley. He didn't have the reinforcement Walker anywhere. Um, when uh, I checked his sideboard, uh, basically I didn't think much of it, you know, half of it was for me. I figured the cloud riders come in the no good to me dead and the extra yeah, lackey. No. Um, he might've brought in the, the extra Vader, but I'm not sure. Um, but I didn't know what he would really cut. Uh, which was also so. This is like no about. good to me. Dead versus Whaley main is basically like the distinction. Yeah, and um, then reinforcement Walker and like he has four long. The other guy didn't know four long. Yeah, yeah and I I don't know. Um, Bosk, Bosk. Yeah, I think I Bosk to... is. I like this list. I think I like this one a little bit better. Yeah, I think when you can ramp into Syndicate Lackeys, they're good. And I think people are down on Syndicate Lackeys because of how much Boba Yellow got played over the last few months. But when you're ramping into Syndicate Lackeys and you can actually just kill a Sabine or a 3-5 before they attack, really, like, you know, it, it, can be, it can be really, really good. Yeah. Um, but only two Forlorn, two Zuckus, which is kind of interesting. Um, I had a really wild play to try and win game two. Um, which I had to litigate a little bit online over the, the last 24 hours. Yeah, I watched. I understood it. Yeah, my thinking was like I could have used Wrecker to wrath the board, um, but then he had a 7th Fleet Defender and I would have had nothing. And um, I took the opportunity to put him to lethal with the Wrecker for next turn when he wasn't tapped out because I had a Cassian in the row. So I, I flipped the Cassian and attacked in with the Rebel Assault to put him at si uh, 6 health remaining. And um, then your Wrecker first. If he didn't have anything... If he your, didn't have a pump road, if he didn't have a hot shot blaster, action was de was getting him. I mean, given that context, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I couldn't do it in reverse because if I flipped the Cassian, he would have open mana and maul. Right. Which would a would a second four cause have killed him if you had record to no, run? No, because that would have only put him at twenty one. Like I had to I actually like, put I like him. Girl. I had to actually put him at twenty four with the Cassian swing. Yeah, dude, you took a line. No, that makes sense. Then I didn't realize he was you, that. You tried to find a way to he win. He had that like, much so, life. No, that's. Good. I think that's the thing people that's miss, dude. And like the sideline armchair analysts, like you put yourself in a position to win that game. Like, right? I didn't play not to I, lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's just 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 percentages, man. Like, how do we steal games? Like, how do we win the mats? How do we get the top eights? How does Mike top eight his last three events? How does Wu top? the last two big events he played, like, how did we do that? How right. did our team get all these mats? We find ways to win. Like, you're going to lose sometimes. Like, okay. Yeah, I was pretty actually excited when I ripped that Rebel Assault and I saw really quickly how that I could put him to lethal. I just needed him to not see it. Um, I also think, like, you're... Um, or not have it. Like, you didn't have a Poe in one of the games that, like, he... You would have just wrapped the board with that and you would have had three units to zero, I think, or maybe two units to zero, but... Like, a, a Poe in one of the games would have been absolutely nutty. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, he played really well. But, like, it is tough when you see, like, you know, one player gets the ramp and then you're not drawing, like, Poe as much. Or, you know, cards that maybe Dark Saber, I don't think you played in the in the top in the, in the the top eight match. So, um, but that's cards, too. And I think that's one of the, speaking of the earlier point, like, you played really well, you top aided, you lost the match. Like that's just what happens. Um, it doesn't mean anything more than it means. Like you Exactly. You know, you anyone's like, Oh, this is this or that. It's like, no, it's just like you put yourself in a great position to win. 
He did really well. Wu also top eighted in, in top, yeah, forward, top forward, actually. Yeah, top forward. So it's like put in the trust your reps and then understand that you know you're a grown up and sometimes you need to match. And yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I have lost yeah, many games just... and I will lose many more. Yeah, right. But yeah, dude, good run for both top you guys. Four. I mean, our our the TTT we had a win. We had a top four and a top eight and all three big events. Then yeah. in the SCG had more people than some of the PQs. So right. Yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, I just I was just hyped that we finally had organized play. I know the prizes weren't everything that people wanted, but what like this store out? gave out one thousand dollars to. What did you end up? Shout out to the store. What did you end up like putting in your trunk when you drove home? Uh, well, for eighth, I didn't get much. Um, the the split got node, so the split would have been two eighty seven okay. each for credit, which is kind of a chunk. And uh, I ended up with a hundred because two people voted for two people nice. voted no on the split, which you know, whatever, um, would have yeah. been nice. Is that right? Yeah, boba green. All right, here. and so there's a third oh, boba no. green, but even yeah. though I've been boba pinging, thirty, I've been I've been pinging people for the last hour trying to find the list. To this, but we we don't have it unfortunately. Um, but Boba Green beats Han Two Blue in the finals of this one, and this had wow. uh, two Han Two decks, which you know have been mostly absent from the the top eights. I think there was one other one possibly in Texas, but well, it has a tough time against the greens and the greens showed up this weekend. Absolutely. And we see five Bobas in the top eight here with two Han twos and then one Sabine. I um, mean, overwhelming barrage is pretty good against the deck that curves out and hurts its guy. So, yeah, I mean, barrage is crazy and you know, it does on some levels. It's like, well, why, why, why haven't people been playing Boba green all this time? Like what's been holding them back? And I don't know if it was like, if it's a mixture of like, well, that's all anyone played in set one and everyone wanted to play other things, but now it's time to get yeah. back to business. I mean, lots of people said the first, even, like, at, like n no context at all. First week in a PQ is a lot of people are going to play Sabine. And if that's the case, like playing barrage, playing McClunky, like that sounds great. So I think, yeah. I think some really smart players play Boba green and, mm -hmm. um, and it really think, worked out for them. I think given what was popular early, like we had the palps to start, you know, like those green palp decks, and then we got like some control. So I think it was just kind of like in the wings and like kind of, you know, I think it really started to catch on when, you know, the um, Alex did well with it and people started to do well with it. It's like, oh yeah, this is still a deck. Um, yeah. It's also like it's harder to puzzle piece the stuff too. Like when we saw that, like the two lists, like one has waylay, one has uh, right. no good to me dead. One count. has five really big drops. One has eight. Like there's still like if and, and this is for a lot of the decks, well, although probably not so much Sabine, but like there's sort of these decision points internally about the decks, like what direction they're going. Like we saw the um, like the Spanish uh, Boba Yellow didn't have main deck cuisines. You know, like all these different sort of internal pathways. Um, where you don't, you know, maybe you choose one that's like, you know, a month ago and you play five games and it has this internal module that's just like not as refined and that's the list that you sort of copied. Right. And you can't engage, you don't understand how it works or maybe that that's just not that great. And you lose a bunch of times. You lose to Akira, you lose to a Sabine. You're like, yeah, this deck stinks. I'm not going to do it. So I think like people who put in reps on like these these 30 point lists that are 50 cards, um you know, math majors or PhD majors yeah. or whatever. And they're actually saying like, oh, this actually really works well. And like, hey, we're we're ramping and we're getting our Sabines off the table with Barrage. And we're mm -hmm. like, the only thing that they really have is Poe. But you know what? Even if they Poe, now we've got Vader and Maul to like come back from that. Like that's really, really strong. And like, yeah, we've got this end game. Like I, I could certainly see that um, this deck do is the work. A, lot, a lot of good things going for it. Yeah, you got to do the work. But the one thing I want to say quick is like when we formed our TTT, Mike sent us that ma that Magic the Gathering article about cascading and how like people you know made these assumptions and the meta was shaped by it. I think this game does that a lot. Like it's such a small local regionalized game. Like we see it a lot in our chats too in our deck threads. Like the joke, the running joke is like everything's favored in Takira, but like people just set like just make these assumptions and it cascades down and like. People are like, oh, Boba Green's not a deck anymore. And it's like, oh, no, it's there. Or you played Best of Ones on some people's favorite way to play the game. Um, and it's like, that's not real information. So yeah. um, be careful of your Cascades, boys, because it's pretty easy to tell like who plays the game and who practice and, and who kind of just shoots from yeah. the hips. Right, right, uh, right. 
Yeah, and yeah. I love like I love a smaller game because there there are never enough iterations for everything to be solved, and there is innovation, and people do continue to adjust, and it makes it makes the game really fun. Um, I think. Yeah, you to, don't like, have a magic online where right. you see like what are the uh, dailies? Is that what they're called? Dailies, and you'd see like the exact same deck fifty yeah. times, and you might be like, "Boris Reckoner and an island." That doesn't <laughs> make sense. But like for the most part, you'd see the lists, and you'd say like, "All right, that's the exact same deck. That's the exact same deck. That's the exact same deck." Oh, this card's got like blood moons on the side move, sideboard or whatever. Like, oh, that's cute or whatever. But yeah, like and then for the tomorrow, most everyone's part, doing it. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, and then someone wins, and everyone has like the list because you're actually able to like download and like just import into like whatever the app is, and like that's your deck. Yeah. We're not, you know, people are a little more creative, and they're a little more. Not, I shouldn't say a little more creative, but things are just a little bit more grassroots. Um, I do. I would do want to move on to the Colorado Springs PQ, which is a pretty small mm-hmm. PQ, only forty six players. Um, but this one we saw Iden Blue thirty point win, so we see like a, a legitimate control deck win, and there's a not. Uh, it was it was a Discord member. What, do you have their name handy? Oh, it's on yeah, the next slide. They, but the finals were yeah, the, it's on the next slide. The finals were two of our um, K two D subs. K two D subs. Now and... this is a crazy outlier on the weekend because there's not a single Zero boba miss. in this top eight. Uh, two yeah, like Hantu one blues, Sabine, no Boba. One this Sabine, oh, so, and uh, another Hantu ECL, two Kira thirties, and a Ray Tarkin Town. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Uh, Zero Mus with this. I need to compare this to the uh, Iden wow. Blue. I mean, the Kira Blue that I've been rocking. This is uh, cool looking. Have to try and move us over a little bit. Um, this is well, Crate Dragon. Bendu's wild. I I like it. I don't. Oh, you don't see. Oh, okay. I I was wondering like how the hell are you ever playing Cray Dragon? Okay, you're tackling with Bendu and then playing it for yeah just nine. regular cost paying for nine. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, that's nifty. Yeah, oh, Bendu cute. the boy. Bendu tech. Cool. Yeah, you that's... can't do that with Bazine, but you can play it with the uh, oh because it's, it's, it's not hero. It's not hero. It's not hero. So you can play that's, other neutral cards cool. without the cost. Yeah, it's def- it's definitely yeah. cool. Um, and Cray Dragon, and uh, like obviously a very cheeky way to win. Yeah. Like the double um, restock is cool. This is just, you know, it's it's that deck that's just milling people, killing everything. Yeah. Vigilance. Yeah. I'm going to have to pick uh, Zeromus' uh, brain because I wonder how many times he actually played the Bazine. He's in the Iden Blue deck thread, like doing like a Q&A. Like all, since he's announced he's win, he's been in there like telling everyone. This deck like, looks great. Yeah. No, I need to catch up on that. I didn't know. A totally different angle. Yeah, I'll, I'll tag you in it so you're... Yeah, I'm uh, followed. Yeah, I am not. <laughs> I actually unfollow a lot of deck threads today. I was like, I just yeah, need a break. In, Yesterday, not being able to be on Discord all day was like really good for my brain. But yeah, this I've been looks... trying to take a break because I live in that thing. Yeah, I love... Um, like, yeah. And I was testing I love Iden Blue and Kira. Yeah. Maddie and I were talking about a while, maybe a month ago. We were like, "Hey, what about Yellow Iden with like Bazine, Bounty Hunter Crew, and um, yeah. the Bounty? If you want to like, win the mill draw cards, the mill mirrors, you want Yellow, and, like, yeah. This yeah, is cool yellow. with like the Yellow. It's a like, different, slightly different take, but it was like, hey, Iden just kills everything, gains a bunch of life. You're basically at 35 base essentially. Yeah. And like, what if you just restock and kill things? Like, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool deck. Yeah, I would probably try, and maybe this, maybe Zero Must already did, but like, I think in these decks, like, I would try like one Search Your Feelings because, like, as the game goes late, I really like the Search Your Feelings restock yeah. thing when you have so many resources. Um, but yeah, this yeah, is sick. I, I, I love the innovation. Like, I thought, I think there's some cheeky, like, talk about finding wins, like, using Bendu to, like, get your crate dragon out. Like, that's pretty freaking savage. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Love, you I love can Bank play Bank. on a different axis. Like, I think. You know, we only have two sets, so obviously it's not as easy. And like, you know, not to derail on set three spoilers, but we're seeing some things that are going to operate on a different axis. Like this, yeah. I think we're about to see, see like things get really pushed. But yeah. um, the one thing I do want to say here is like, I would really want the Sugi's main and the third top target main. Like, I would really lean into the upgrade yeah. Sugi part. Um, put yeah. a, put an upgrade. Yeah. Put one of those things on in space. Sugi's Sentinel on the ground. Like I. I could see that. I think this is a wild call, good. but like if the, if you're gonna play a bunch of non-blue stuff in a, in a deck like this, um, like I think actually that the upgrade Sugi plan is could potentially be better than Childson. Um, but okay, you'd have now to we're crazy. No, if but if you're gonna play a bu- like not five, not six non-blue yeah, cards, yeah. but you could lean way away from blue and play things like the um, the three two sentinel ship, right? Like you could you could get far away from blue. Like Ch- Childson's yeah. amazing, obviously, but I think what Sugi does is give you another avenue to not have to be so blue. Yeah, I'd probably... Also, like, a bounty hunter crew. 
like at all. Yeah, I know. I would definitely like, have one of those. I, I, I would, would probably play those instead of um, crates or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe the. Tobias's. I love Long Pike, but sometimes like I, three is tough without ECL. Yeah, without ECL, I agree. I think there's um, some room to maneuver here. Yeah, but like well, that's you know right. nitpicking, and that's like kind of what we do, right? We like to tweak, and like you know we're deck builders, so right. Um, but this is a lot of sick. Yeah, and just shout out for having the absolute stones to bring this deck and then like crush and win in the springs. So shout out to my boy uh, Matt Barbini and the U.S. uh, Olympic swim team (laughs) hanging out in the springs. Don't don't hear much about Colorado Springs too often. Uh, And then we had one in Canada at Taps Games in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, we didn't oh. get, even though I also pinged looking for this, I didn't get the third and fourth place finishers. But Han won green, wins Whoa. this one over a Bobby Yellow in the finals. And the top four uh, featured a Ray Blue. Shout out to Ray Blue Pilots. I, I played against one at the event uh, I was at. And uh, Bosk ECL, also in the top four. And, um, of course, we only know six to eight decks here. But from what we see... No Boba Green, and but there is a Gar Saxon yellow. Uh, so pretty spicy. Like yellow is wild. This Dude, one also I think Gar is underrated. I'm sure it is underrated. Like just playing shit with shields that then get pumped up, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, one thing I was going to say about Top Target and why I liked it main, sorry, real quick, is like in these attrition wars, just healing your own guys is completely reasonable. But I. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, Gar's cool. I, I mean, love Top Target. I, it's. Yeah, I think so. Like, I was kind of thinking we would see more Han one green, you know, like I was starting to see that crop up. But obviously, like, if you, I think Boba, Boba green's probably just better into that, right? But, um, I don't know because think, one thing that Boba really struggled with in set one were the home one decks, like the decks that got to home mm-hmm. one and then, then outvalued, um, Boba green. Like, remember that the one K I flew to in Florida where the like the Luke green. Yeah with 30 points right. just one because it just made the game go longer and then it just oh, topped right. out at home ones and we were you finding like, one somehow somehow that deck was beating boba green consistently because the home one is such a value train that it actually outvalues everything boba green is taking to the table yeah um, dude I, oh. if you if you sleep on home one and like re- that thing will crack <laughs> how much so I run amazing two, that's why I, I run two super laser blast main dude. i've been yeah, working no some good i've been working yeah, with some people cool. on um han two green and like like working on their decks with them and man i gotta say like i've, I've been casting a lot of home ones lately and it is fun as hell i miss that yeah. i miss that card it's still amazing i was running like i not the tangent but like also in like the block party of the blue green you know oh, yeah, yeah. The deck like once blue green hero gets like a a leader that I'm, and I think Boba hero oh, is still pretty good, but six is just such a tough cost. Like I think that archetype could be insane in the right in the right leader hands. Um, home one's insane, Luke's are insane, stuff like that. So yellow also an insane color because you get Han. So like yeah, I I mean I think this is dope. I haven't seen the list yet. I bet we're about to slide to it, but uh, we are not. Because okay. I didn't yeah, get it. Didn't get time. That one's oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, get. Uh, I, well, you I, play I, home ones. You play. You play tempo cards. Um, yeah, man. I like yeah. it. I, I, I had a lot of trouble with Han. DMs. I tried to like really, really yeah, use, we, really use the KTOD power to get all the, the decks, but I I couldn't do it in time for recording. Well, I'll say this. I, so if you're expecting, if you're expecting sabine ecl like those are two great decks to bring, bring because when i went to gen con at my first gen con day that i went like three three drop um i played against one boba green and two han green 30s all 30 health and like that was a slog and i think i went one two i went one and one against the han greens and zero and one Ooh. against the boba like between the mcclunkies and the yeah. um the the restore to the sundaris like there's a lot of shit to get through and like they can they can heal they can stall and like before you know it like they're dropping their big drops like it, it can be really tough so um those are two great decks to bring when you're expecting sabine which was like a counter to like the bosk stuff from a couple weeks ago so it's kind of interesting um which which i'm sure mike leads us to what we're thinking about for two weeks 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing to really leave off on here is um, I guess I'll just go back to the, the first slide because that's it for us covering PQs until we get yeah. the, Cal Can uh, the California results in Pasadena. Right. But how are we adjusting this meta? I mean, I think I think like if we play uh, this week, we're going to see a lot of people playing Boba Green and we need to adjust to Boba Green. I think yeah. if you want to play Boba Green, um, you know, I don't think you can. I wouldn't recommend doing what the guys in Jersey did, which was like cutting the walkers and going uh, only two Vaders, right? They like went light on the top end because they correctly predicted the heavy Sabine meta. Yeah. I would say that like the games are going to go longer, and you actually want the extra Vader potentially, yeah, the fire or, power, um, but definitely the reinforcement walkers. Um, and yeah, so you, At you least want in the, the game. 60, you know what I mean? I could see like it this being a well, I think there's a couple of different avenues you can go now if you've got a PQ next weekend. You could like take the deck that you have, like the Sabine people, maybe like the the Boba yellow people, Boba yellow people, Hantu like, okay, people. Yeah. Let's Hantu. Let's adapt. What? Do, how does this matchup against Green really look? Green thirty Boba. What do we need to do? What's our approach need to be? And then you kind of do some self analysis there. Can I win with this angle? Let's see what it looks like. So on and so forth. Yeah. Um, and if that's reasonable, you just sort of you understand that and you lean into it. You could also do a, go a different direction, and I know Wu lost to it, but you could go into, you know, like the blue villain control, blue green villain control traditionally has had, and this obviously does have a higher top end, but traditionally it's had a better match. It's had a pretty decent matchup against the Boba decks, like Super Laser Blast, deleting everything. Maybe you go up to three, Super Laser Blast. Yeah, getting deck, the board clear for when they flip Boba, mm -hmm. having power of the dark side. Years, and even though there's, they've got Devastator and they've got a bigger curve, ultimately you should be ahead based upon um, some of those things. But things like Bazine and McClunky can help that. So I think that's an avenue. And then the third angle I would have is is just, hey, listen, this deck's really good. Let's let's play it. Like, let's play this 30 Boba. Yeah, just be um, the guy. I wanted to be the guy that plays what was certainly the best deck this weekend was Boba 30. Um, and just be like, all right, it's going to be the best deck. It, it's the best deck, so let me learn how to play it and understand what I need to do into Sabine, what I need to do into Control, because mm -hmm. I do think those will be the, the decks. I do think this is probably bad news for the Han Yellow players. I would say that. That, to me, feels like the biggest uphill climb um, because they've got... You know, it's just hard. They've got ramp. the top end that's really big. They've got yeah. They've got Han the Yellow melee. doesn't want to see ramp. I don't think Han Yellow wants to see this deck gaining in prop popularity. So I think Sabine and Boba Yellow can kind of say like, "All right, you know what? We we got a game plan. We fall into it. Let's explore one." Where yeah. Han 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 Yellow is kind of like, "Oh crap! Like this this is not great." Might need to put a week away. What's interesting right. too is like, if you're and it's a good point that you said like maybe you just play the deck because like. If people are like, oh, okay, the meta is going to go later because people are going to try to go deeper than this deck. Right. They people are going to try to counter that by going to Sabine. Right. And then if you stay the course, it's like a right. rock, paper, scissors. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, yeah. I still, my Kira 30 boys, I think, I think you can stay the course here. Um, I think I know that everyone loves like ECL, but I really think like playing Childs and playing more Super Laser Blast, maybe adding like one Rivals Fall, and like it, it got brought up in our thing. Like, oh, they'll just strip the Rivals Fall. This is an attrition war, guys. Yeah, they strip the Rivals Fall, then you have the Super Laser. I love casting Rivals you know I mean? Fall. Yeah, like, like if they if if they um, if they take those, like you can play towards your takedown. Maybe you, I, I would probably play a second takedown because like you can chip the damage and then finish it when it has the armor on it. It's not hard to deal um, for damage. You know what I mean? Like yeah. to, to the Boba, even with the thing. So like, yeah, they're going to like, I hate that argument up. Like they're going to, they, yeah, well, they're going to play the game. They're, I, your opponent, like a, things are going to, a happen. card that I really but, like for the next weekend and possibly two weeks <laughs> is regional governor. Uh, yeah, I really, if you know what you're looking for. I right really here. like regional governor naming like Bodhi or something. You know, like just right. making sure that you can get to that point in the game where they can't, like, they can't take that card. You know what I mean? Like Bodhi is yeah. so huge for these yellow decks. Like they're really relying on Bodhi, and even Baz like Bazines is good, but you at least you still get a card off that. You know, like they take yeah, a good one, right. but you're like ideally your deck is full of good ones. So I'm kind of into regional governor right now. Might even start looking at it in Ray. It's exciting times ahead. I think it's, we, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, OP and this is just the tip of the iceberg, but it's fun to have these conversations and look and say, this guy won and this guy won. And people are putting time in to, to bring lists. You know, Boba 30 wasn't like everywhere 
um, like every 1K or whatever the last couple of weeks that we've been covering, like things that aren't, you know, official events. Yeah. And um, no, it's cool to see things. And it's cool things to see things like the Iden pop up. And, um, and it's the They're still best is just seeing people who put in work, like Mike and, and Wu to really, and Tata to put in work. And that ultimately is going to be what gets you there. Because if you can get the top eight, then you get the mat, then you get to play the games. And then maybe yep. it's your day and you win those too. Yeah. So, All right. Um, well, good so talk. Great. Um, we'll be back on our podcast next week, uh, talking about all the planetary qualifiers from next weekend. Yeah, and then more. in two weeks, uh, me and Maddie will be heading out to Clifton park to hit up our, uh, PQ, uh, in New York. So, yeah. So uh, if you're there, come say what's up to us. Cause that's for me, like, I love competing, but like, man, part uh, of like the, <laughs> the juice is like seeing everyone, man. Uh, I talked to a bunch of people yesterday and I had one guy so nervous that he's like, Hey, I just wanted to come up and say hi to you. And he was eating his bagel and he like spit his bagel onto me and he was oh like God. so devastated. And I was like, we're good, dude. All right, it, like, dude, good. spit your bagel all over it's me, baby. All yeah. good. Let's, I just want to say see, what's up to you see guys, Maddie, right? just make sure you buy a bagel. Spit, yeah, just have a bagel <laughs> in your 10 hand. 10 minutes later, come back and start. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Oh yeah.